Hello, welcome to 21 This Week. I'm Susan Heltimus. Coming up next, 2019 Maryland Legislative Session. It's over. Montgomery County under new management. Wil women in politics today and the state mourns for House Speaker Mike Bush. We are joined today by an amazing panel of female politicians. Former Rockville Mayor Rose Krasna, businesswoman, Ro Republican businesswoman Rose Lee, Lori Halverson, president of the Chevy Chase Republican Women's Club, and former county councilwoman Nancy Fleury. And I believe this is the first all women on a panel, so I'm expecting great things. Stay tuned for these topics and these amazing women next. On the eve of Sine Die, the longest serving House Speaker in Maryland, Mike Bush, passed away. The state of Maryland is still in shock and is mourning the loss of the giant leader in Annapolis. On Monday, he will lie in state in the rotunda of the Maryland State House from 1 to 7 p.m. and on Tuesday from 8 to 10 a.m. prior to the funeral, a truly fitting tribute to Speaker Bush. Nancy. Mike Bush, nicknamed the coach, was a champion of the Bay education, is given great credit for passing marriage equality and $15 an hour wage in this session. Did Mike Bush make a difference in Montgomery County? Well, I think Montgomery County made a great difference in Mike Bush. Uh, those initiatives have always been major priorities for Montgomery County, and I think Mike, as a centrist, mm -hmm. uh, made those things, uh, objectives, acceptable across the state. Uh, I think that's a way to think about it. You know, we on the, he was speaker as long as I was on the county council, uh, 16 years and, you know, done great things for the state. Uh, but Montgomery County really wasn't part of his ambit particularly. Uh, his job was dealing with uh, hurting the cats, as it were, within the uh, house and making things happen statewide. That's an interesting perspective. So, Laura, you ran last time for the House of Delegates in 15. Did you ever hear anybody, whether you're Republican fellow candidates or anyone else, talk about, you know, their perspective of Speaker Bush? Yes, well, I think Mike Bush was an honorable man, uh, and he followed his true compass, but I did hear a number of things from people that um, he had served a really long time, and both he and Mike Miller, um, because of their length of service <laughs> serving the state, it has be had become somewhat toxic. So that was the general feeling, I think. Okay. Now, Rose, you were the mayor of Rockville, and then you also worked for a long time in planning for the county. Um, how did the speaker make a difference in those two roles, roles that you played? I think he made a difference in both, uh, particularly with his environmental legislation. As Nancy Florine pointed out, uh, some of the initiatives that were passed at the state level were ones that our city and our county were very concerned about. And the Chesapeake Bay is such an important resource, and people are not take, still are not taking uh, enough time to make sure that we're taking care of it. I used to serve as the head of the uh, Chesapeake Bay Policy Committee for COG. Uh, all our streams, all our uh, pollutants, you know, we have to pay attention. They all end up in the Chesapeake Bay. Well, now, Rose, um, Republicans, including Governor Hogan, uh, praise Speaker Bush as a good and decent man who loves his family, his God, and Maryland. What do you think his legacy is going to be? I think that he will be forever known as the longest serving speaker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think he was known for his decency. I think that he did have points of time when he reached across the aisle. Um, I can just tell you from a personal, I, don't, I didn't know the man and never met him, but he helped out the Commission on Aging just recently um, before he took ill. Uh, we had two legislators, there's two members of the Commission on Aging that are appointed by the Speaker and the President of the Senate. And um, people told me there's no way they're going to appoint a Republican on the Commission, and he did. Um, so Kathy Shalega joined the Commission on Aging and uh, Senator Ben Kramer. So we've got two dynamite people, and I credit him with uh, being willing to step across the, the aisle. The other and do thing that. is, we have Rona Kramer as the Secretary mm -hmm. of Aging, and because of her, that agency has gotten a lot more funding, I think, than they might have gotten otherwise. But anyway, he is going to be only the fourth person who's going to be lay, who's going to lie in state in the rotunda. 
The other three were Comptroller Goldstein, uh, Governor Schaefer, and Governor Mandel. So he will be missed. And now on to the next topic. With Sunday Die, the legislative session came to an end this last Monday. The legislature overturned the governor's veto on the Comptroller's oversight of alcohol and tobacco, 15 hours hour per hour wage, start of the school year, and just this week they overturned the governor's veto of Mike Bush's last bill to permanently ban oyster harvesting in five waterways. Panel, many bills have gone to the governor now waiting for his signature to change education funding that includes an inspector general position, the creation of the first prescription drug affordability board in the nation, banning of polystyrenes, and a change to how lieutenant governors are elected among many. What piece of legislation was most important to you, either because it passed or did not pass, and we're just going to go down the line, and we're going to start with uh, Lori. What do you oh. think? <laughs> yes, I would say uh, ranked choice voting. There was a ranked choice voting bill in our county. It was also, there was another one in Baltimore, and I'm really glad that it did not pass because I felt like people did not understand the bill. They had not heard of ranked choice voting. A number of ladies in my Republican club testified against it, so I'm really proud of uh, of what they did, and I feel like they had an influence in, in having the bill stay on the floor and not okay, pass. Okay, Rose, what about you? I was disappointed that the end of life options bill did mm -hmm. not pass. I was not disappointed given the way it had been amended. We You're certainly right. did not want to see that one go through. But I thought we really had a chance this year. You know, eight states had it prior to 2019. New Jersey just passed it. As someone who is aging, I really want to know that I have an option uh, when it comes time to figure out the, uh, how I can die with dignity. Same here. Nancy. Uh, I'd say the minimum wage legislation is a big deal. Uh, uh, finally, the state now uh, joins Montgomery County and Prince George's in terms of leading on this important issue. And it's going to even the playing field for Montgomery County once uh, the wage issues get sorted out over the years. The uh, effective dates are a little different. But nonetheless, uh, it puts us as a state in the forefront. And it, as I said, it evens out the playing field okay. as statewide. Rose Lee. I think <clears throat> traffic in this region is a real problem. And I am very happy that the efforts to overturn uh, Governor Hogan's efforts to widen and add tolls to 270 and 495 did not uh, succeed. I myself as a business owner have employees that have to tra like leave house at 4.30 in the morning just to get to Bethesda. And mine was that we, you have to be 21 unless you're in the military to buy cigarettes now, assuming he passes that. Okay, now quickly, we don't have a lot of time. You're winner and loser this session. And we'll start with Rosalie. Who's your winner and loser? Um, I interpreted that question to be, um, for, for me, it's the blueprint for Maryland's future, the uh, Kerwin Commission legislation. I think child, future children going into schools are the winners. Um, the downside is I think they had to compromise on a lot of it. Um, so, but that would be the, be Lori. Mine. I would say similar, but I would say the teachers union is the winner on that one, not necessarily the children. Uh, and the loser, I would say, are the voters because Governor Hogan was elected by our voters, but a lot of his um, incentives were not f followed, and he was vet he, he vetoed, and it was overturned. Nancy. Uh, Montgomery County, I think, was a big winner. Uh, a lot of our priorities were achieved uh, in this legislative session. And uh, the loser. state's going uh, very in a very progressive way, and I think that's a tribute to um, the leadership and the force of our delegation. Okay, and the last one, your winner and loser. Oh, I would have to say that I thought Hogan was probably the biggest loser mm. um, because so many of the things that he uh, tried to veto got overridden. He still has control of neither house. Uh, in terms of winner, I, I have to say that I thought that Cheryl Kagan did a great job as my state senator. Uh, I, you know, she's really completely uh, changed the 911 system in the state this session, uh, sponsored the polystyrene bill. So I, I thought she had a great session, and as one of her constituents, that made me very happy. My winner is State Senator Will Smith. He's in Iraq now, mm -hmm. but he was the one who was leading the way on death with me medical assisted death, and he's doing a great job as the vice chair of the Judiciary Committee. He's good. He's someone to watch. And my loser this session was the mayor of Baltimore, Catherine Pugh. Oh. Oh. She oh. has lost right and left, and I think many assume that she should just go away and that's going to be interesting but overall um wh next session what do we expect one word mm -hmm. to expect next session 
it's very likely the other mic might not be there. So how would you all describe in one word next year's session in the legislature? We'll start with you and just go down the line. Difficult. Lori. More left agendas. And too many words there. Okay, Nancy. <laughs> Education funding. Uncertain. Uncertain. I think that's the word. <laughs> it, it, it's going to be tr a year of transition. I think transition is my word. Okay. The first quarter of new management in Montgomery County has passed in that time. Longtime police chief Tom Manger has retired. The head of the Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation has resigned. Unions are getting big fat pay raises and the Dickerson incinerator is still open. So panel, if you could be executive for a day, and I know Rosa and Nancy, you wanted that job, what would you do at, that ju at this juncture? One thing. We'll start with you, Rosalie. Um, I think we have an opportunity to influence the um, appointment of a new economic development corporation head, and I would uh, suspend the pay raise, uh, retroactive pay raise to the union employees. Okay, Rose Krasnow, <laughs> what would you do? Mine was similar. I would really sit down with the business leaders in this county and figure out how we can keep them here. Uh, we have uh, seen a lot of liberal initiatives being pushed. I support them, but they cost money, and we are not building roads and doing other things that would help maintain our business base. We count on that business base to bring us uh, dollars, and I don't want to keep raising taxes. Okay, Lori, what would you do? I'd use that day to hire a police chief who follows the, um, who, who lets police do their job and um, follows ICE um, and, and, you know, follows the federal laws as well as okay. local laws. Okay, and Nancy, what would you do? I, uh, along the lines of uh, Rose Krasnow's comments, uh, I would uh, get out there and be marketing Montgomery County, uh, both mm -hmm. internally and externally. Uh, the number one job of the county executive in my mind is you're a salesperson. You're the chief spokesperson for Montgomery County. And that's what the county executive needs to do. The county executive needs to be everywhere, needs to be a positive voice, needs to inspire, and needs to grow the tax base because that's the only way uh, they're going to pay the bills. Well, and I note with interest that yesterday, I think it was the Kojo Nambi show, uh, Robin Ficker called in. He was in front of a giant, and he is now getting a <laughs> referendum on the ballot that is going to limit any tax raise, raise increase to the cost of living. And he is out there now working on that. So, and, and talking about advertising, Mark Elridge is on the Kojo Nambi today, talking about what we're talking about, what Good. the legislation in this last session meant um, to Maryland. So uh, if you had, we're almost done, but <laughs> one word to describe Montgomery County in the next year, what word would you use? And we'll start on this side, under this new management and everything that's coming down. Uh, business unfriendly. Nancy. <laughs> well, I'm going to be positive. Right. Uh, Montgomery County is strong. Strong. Lori. Oh, gosh. I was going to say business unfriendly also. No, okay. <laughs> I well, can't say the same. Okay, Rose, <laughs> what would you say? Uh, changing. Uh, our diversity continues to uh, change and grow, and that's wonderful, but we have not yet adapted to our changing dynamic. Okay, I think this next year is going to be tough. Everything indicates that there is going to be a downturn in the economy. And so it is going to be, I think, a difficult transition, and it's going to be a real challenge to the new council and the executive to handle it. And if indeed that mm -hmm. happens, and the legislature is under two new leaders, and there is a lot of, you know, we're going to be in flux, that I think it's, um, it's going to be interesting. And, you know, one of these women could have been there, and it didn't happen. So on that note, we'll be right back after this break. Stay tuned. And we're back. Every woman on this panel has run for office. Some did not win, and some of us have won and lost. I'll tell you, it's a lot better to win. I give great credit to Rose uh, Krasnow and Nancy, who ran to become the first female executive in Montgomery County. And according to the Center for American Women in Politics, women still have a long way to go to be on equal footing as men in the halls of government across the nation. 
Now, Nancy, overall in the 116th Congress, women hold 127 seats out of 535, or 23.7%. That equals 23.4% or 102 seats in the House and 25 seats or 25% in the Senate. Democrats hold 106 seats, Republicans hold 21. As a longtime council member, what would we gain if we had more women in Congress? In other words, what have you observed about the difference women bring to governance? Well, I, I think uh, collectively we tend to be more collaborative. That's been the standard. I, I will say, though, that I think things have changed uh, these days. You have to be out there, you have to be aggressive, you have to be allowed, and you have, how do you, because your ability to dominate the media affects your ability to get um, support uh, across the board. That's something I've been observing, and uh, that's something what, that was explained to me when I thought about running uh, for Congress a couple of years ago. So I, I'm not sure. Um, that women are that different, I, you know, I think collectively, uh, we bring a lot more to the table. We have a broader experience and are a lot more thoughtful about things. But it's difficult to generalize these days. Uh, but I think that women are better managers of time and issues just because women always do everything. Okay, <laughs> now, Rosalie, well, yeah. the number of Republican women in Congress and across the country don't equal their Democratic sisters. Do you see this changing soon, or will more women, do you think, move over to the Democratic Party if they want to get elected? I do not think more women <laughs> will move over to the Democratic Party. I am optimistic because if you look at the Central Committee elections, more women won in Montgomery County, I believe, than men. I think it's a question of getting the right candidate, and a lot of men run and lose, too. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's really a question of feeding the pipeline, and I think we have some reason for optimism. Now, that's on the Republican side. On the Democratic side, you have equal numbers of men and women. So we always have parity for what it's worth. Okay, Lori, in state legislators, women, legislatures, women hold 28.85% of the seats, with Democratic women holding 1,442 seats, women holding 651 seats. Maryland ranks eighth, and we're at 38.3% women in our legislature. Um, and again, women are also way ahead. Do you see more Republican women coming soon to Annapolis? You know, you mentioned parity earlier, and uh, the Republicans don't have that. We vote for the, who we think is the best candidate. Uh, we don't require a certain number of men, a certain number of women to be on our central committee. Um, and as far as, um, you know, I just, it's hard for a woman to run as a Republican. We had a lot of women who ran, Rose Krasna, I mean, Ro Rosalie ran in 2014, and she's a, got a PhD, a businesswoman, fantastic lady, and she, you know, we run against um, media. Media doesn't want to talk to us. Unions do not want to endorse us. It's really hard to, to, to win in this county, and a, a, a Republican, if a, if a man would win, I'd be happy too, because we have not had a Republican in office since 2002. You could um, <laughs> come over to the other side. I do <laughs> want to say that I want to commend right now Montgomery Community Media right here for all the work they do in elections and giving yes. uh, publicity mm -hmm. to all candidates since the Gazette left. We now have MCM, and, and I think it, it, I just give them kudos every chance I get. So, Rose Krasna, in Montgomery County, we now have a male executive and only one of nine people on the council, although she is the president this year. Um, is Montgomery County is slipping in female representation. Do you see this getting better or worse as we head to 2022? Well, I would almost say it could only get better given the lack of representation of women at the county level right now. When I decided to run for county executive, at first I thought I was the first woman to ever do it. I learned that Ida Mae Garrett actually ran in uh, 1972, and Betty Ann Kroenke, of course, had hoped to run before she got sick and unfortunately Esther passed Gilman. away. But, um, Esther Gelman ran also? I think so. I think you might be right. But uh, it's fascinating to me when I look at the number of women who were incredibly upset when Hillary Clinton 
uh, could not become president of this country and who vowed that they were going to work because, you know, you can't just start running for president. You have to work your way up. And if we can't get elected working our way up, then we certainly will still not uh, see women at the top levels of government. And we approach the issue so differently that I, I'm really disappointed in my county that we didn't elect more women to the county council, for example. I think to really have a good discussion of all the issues, we need men and women at the table, and we don't have women. So what do women need to do in Montgomery County in the state of Maryland to get better representative? I'm going to leave Senate and Congress and all that alone. We, but uh, what, what can we do? We have just a couple minutes. What can we do to make it better? Well, they need to network. I mean, they have to get out there. Mm -hmm. This is all about connections. It's who you know, frankly, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You have to raise money. You yeah. have to know a lot of people. You have to be known. Uh, you can get there through a variety of means, but you have to work it. And I don't think women do have historically done that as much as they might. Uh, the pipeline uh, for the county council is pretty limited at this point. We have uh, uh, new incumbents there. Uh, new candidates there who, who are shoo-in uh, for the future. There will be openings in the next election because uh, people are getting timed out, but uh, it's, it's, it's a real challenge. There are not a lot of women in the wings. Uh, uh, Jill Hartman Faust tried, uh, didn't make it. Marilyn from the, Balcom. Uh, uh, Marilyn Balcom. Well, the people who were known, and it's ho I'm hopeful uh, that they will have a better shot next time around. Uh, and that has and, worked and for the men, that's for sure. Next time, let me see, Craig Rice and Nancy... F Nancy, Nancy Navarro's Navarro. out. Are those they're, the they're only both two out. next time? Um, let's see here. I, I think they're... Uh, Hans? Hans, you're right. Hans, Hans too. too. So Sid would be the only one ability. So that'd be three openings for sure. And so women well, get out Well, and there. Craig. Did we say Craig? Craig, yeah. yeah. Craig I think Hans. the other issue is to have women start earlier because a lot more men say that they already knew they wanted to run for office, like when they're in college. And I think that helps you start to plan and do things that, that women and, don't think and about And women doing. run for office late because they stay home and take care of the babies. Well, <laughs> and women went, decide to get in late. I decided to get in too late. Too late. Um, You're right. And, and you know what? Next time you got to get in earlier, we got to take a break so we can come back <laughs> for parting shots. And we're coming right back for parting shots. And so now we're back with parting shots. Um, Rose Krasna, your first parting shot ever, and I'm so glad to have you here today. <laughs> uh, I uh, really think we're going to see some turmoil in the uh, next year and even in the years ahead. We talk about the differences between the urban areas of Maryland and the rest of the state. We've got some of those same problems here in the county uh, where we truly have haves and have nots where we have people who don't want to see any change versus those who know we need to grow in order to succeed. So I think it's going to be a tough year. Rose Lee. I'm going to give a shout out to Maryland Public Policy Institute. They do wonderful work researching the economics of what's happening in the state. And they just completed a business survey in 2018 showing that um, business climate, per perception about business climate among businesses is, is more positive than 2011, the last time the survey was done. But they're seeing a lot of challenges with the labor, tight labor market because unemployment in Maryland is at 4%. And that and the tax climate are the things that are going to be slowing down our growth. Um, and it's good to have you back. And Lori, mm -hmm. and it's good to have you back. Oh, thank you. Uh, I want to encourage everyone to ask their senator to act on the federal judge appointments. There is a huge backlog, um, and we really need those judges appointed because we have a lot of civil cases waiting, and we want a timely justice to be served in our country. And Nancy, your first parting shot. Thank you for being here today. Uh, well, thank you. And let me tell you, there should be more shows that are all women. There are plenty of <laughs> shows that are all men. Uh, Amen. Let <laughs> me say this. Uh, with all due respect to Mike Bush, uh, he had a liver transplant in the year before he was reelected. Uh, yet he ran again. And, you know, change in leadership, change in positions uh, is not a bad thing. And I raise the question how do we get leadership to understand that sometimes it's okay, to, you have to step down uh, so that the people can decide not the party uh, system, who is going to take your place. And that is a challenge that I think my, uh, Maryland is certainly going to face with uh, Mike Miller's situation, 
Uh, God bless him. Uh, for, His health is precarious. Uh, uh, prostate, fourth stage, fourth stage of mm. prostate cancer, this is not a good thing for him. Between losing Mr. Bush and Mr. Miller, if that happens, Maryland is going to be in some amount of turmoil. Okay. Well, again, thank you, women. First time ever off-female panel, and, <laughs> and next time I host, I may bring the four of you back, and we'll talk more. Thank you for joining us each and every week. Thank you to the panel uh, for Montgomery County's hardest-hitting political talk show, uh, 21 this week, and be sure to follow the show on social media. See you next time, and I'm Susan Heltimus. Bye for now. <laughs>